everyone welcome back to the essential owl Erin here to make another cold process soap today we are making one of our Christmas custom order soaps and I'm really excited about this one I'm gonna try something new that I have not done yet before I don't know if it's gonna work out if it does great if it doesn't I tried <laughs> So today we are going to be using this fragrance oil right here. This is Santa Spruce by Brambleberry. There is a little bit of vanilla in it, so I do expect it to get a little bit dark, but that's really not that much. That's going to turn in an, an uncolored soap. It will turn it to a light brown, to a tan, or like an off-white creamy color, which is totally fine. But this, you guys smells very 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 good even though it's called santa spruce and there is definitely a sprucey evergreen sort of note in there it is definitely not the only note and i would go so far as to say that it is not the only prominent note in there i will put the fragrance notes up on the screen now so that you can look over those for yourself but this smells really good it's very sweet but not overly so it's almost like if you took an evergreen and turned it into some sort of candy or something it, it's really really nice i'm not doing very good at describing it but it is very very nice this is supposed to behave well no acceleration no rising so we will have to see about that now for the color that's going to be a little bit interesting because I am going to mainly be using this Alpine Green Mica Powder. This is one of my favorite greens. It's not my absolute favorite, but it's definitely up there. If you can see, sorry that I'm shaking the camera a little bit. I'm trying to get it to focus, but this is a nice forest evergreen sort of color. It, it works beautifully. I love it. And I am going to be adding just a little bit of vibrance green vibrance mica just to sort of spruce <laughs> finds spruce it up a little bit <laughs> now what I'm gonna attempt to do today are mica lines now we will just have to see how that goes because with my law water solution I've had this set out for a little while and I have quite a bit of lye lint in here, so I do plan on straining it. Now, for whatever reason, it seems like when I have to strain my lye water solution, it turns my batter, my raw soap, very, 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 very liquidy. And I don't know why, but that's generally how it goes. So I'll just have to see how liquidy it gets and if I need to let it sit for just a few minutes or however long it takes to thicken up just a little bit, I will do that. But I plan on doing just a few, maybe even just one. We'll have to see how it goes. Mica lines with this winter white mica powder from Nurture Soap. This is a very pretty white. There is no shimmer in here or anything like that. There is just a little tiny bit of pearlescence, but nothing, nothing just super stand out. It has a nice icy blue pearlescence to it. This is not titanium dioxide. This is mica. And on the top, I do want to do a little bit of sprinkling with that on the top along with this snowflake sparkle mica and i've talked about this several times before on this channel but if you're new or you haven't watched one of those episodes this is the snowflake sparkle yes snowflake sparkle mica it's just a very pretty white silver shimmer sparkle this does nothing to color a soap it only adds extra sparkle but it does marvelous on top of wintry christmasy just in general glittery soaps this is super nice absolutely love it i've used quite a bit of it you can see I, I i really enjoy using this so without further ado i don't think i have anything else to say let me get my mold clear here so it's ready to go i believe we're ready to jump into this single color soap
Alrighty, that's all the mixing that I'm going to do. I did stick blend this for a couple of extra minutes. It didn't need it, but I wanted to try to thicken it up a little bit, and I really like this consistency. It's pretty fluid still, but I think I'm going to try it. I might be, <laughs> might be able to pull this off. We will have to see. Let me dismantle this stick blender here. So... Get that into position for you guys but look at that color is that not so pretty it's not bright green but it's not too dark of a green i really like it that was exactly what i was going for a good sprucey evergreeny sort of green so what i'm going to do now is attempt to pour just a little bit into the bottom here Hopefully it continues behaving this well. Now, I am going to shake this just a little bit to get it into the corners, but I'm not going to smooth it out because when I do this mica line, that will show up in the mica line, that texture, and I think that will look really cool. So, we'll have to see. So I'm going to very carefully scoop some of this winter white mica into my little strainer here and very gently i hope you guys can see what i'm doing i don't want these to be super thick they can't be anyway the lines they can't be super duper thick because then the soap has a risk of not sticking together the different layers but i do want it to be noticeable when we cut into the soap so I'm just going to gently tap against the edge of this thing and sort of go all around, try to get all the corners and right into the middle. Now this is the first mica line that I will have ever done. So we'll have to see how this goes. Now this is starting to thicken up just a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to pour it but I am going to, as gently as possible, deposit <laughs> some of this. And it is holding, it looks like. It doesn't look like it's breaking through, which is great. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. I don't really have time to stop and check and make sure the camera isn't blurry. So I apologize in advance if it is. But I'm just going to get a nice layer in here. I think I'll do at least one more light mica line. This smells so good. And now that it's actually in the soap, that spruce evergreen note is definitely more prominent and it's super nice. If you like pine sort of scents, you're really going to enjoy this. Now I am going to take my spatula and just very gently smooth this out. When I'm done, I will bang it down, but I don't want to risk breaking those layers just yet. So I'm just going to shimmy this into place. And that will also give me a little bit more texture as well. Now let's do our second line. Quickly, quickly. I'm hoping that this will sort of look like snow on the branches of a pine tree or something. I don't know if that's what's going to come across when it actually is cut into, but that's the look that I'm going for. All right, now I'm just going to keep doing this until I get to the top or until it gets too thick to work with. So I will just speed through this and hopefully, like I said, hopefully you all can see what I'm doing. But just sit back and enjoy for a minute.
right, the layers are done, so now I'm gonna bang it down on the floor. All right, so all of the bubbles that I think I'm gonna get are banged out. Now I'm just going to sort of build this top up a little bit because it did settle just a little. Just don't want a bunch that have this big divot in the middle. So I'm just gonna plop some on the top and sort of smooth it out. I'm not gonna do any crazy design on top today because I am going in with more mica on the top. This smells so good. Why has no one invented Smell-O-Vision yet? <laughs> that is what I wanna know. I'm just gonna take this extra soap that I got and stick it into my little owl mold over here. Right, so I'm just going to very lightly texture the top of this soap. Nothing super special. I'm just very lightly going over it with my spatula. I'm hoping, I don't know how well I'm doing, but I'm hoping to sort of emulate evergreen tree branches. And this is a representation, not a replication, <laughs> for sure. But, maybe it will turn out. Might have to go back over this top one more time after I clean these edges up just a little bit with this spatula. do that right now I'm just going to very lightly take this spatula and go back and forth like this with pretty much just the very tip of the spatula and I'm very 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 lightly very lightly touching the top of that soap now it's time to decorate the top I'm going to do a super duper light dusting of the winter white mica. Maybe it'll end up being a little bit thicker than I intended, but you know, that's just how it goes sometimes. <laughs> now, one thing I do wanna mention is that you might notice the color of this soap is a, maybe a little bit unattractive right now. Greens always, 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 always morph to However you would describe this color, this kind of pucy green, when you first add it to your raw batter, but most greens will morph back, so it's not that big of a deal. So in my little mica strainer here, I've got some of the winter white on the bottom and some of the snowflake sparkle on top. So what I'm gonna do now is very lightly dust over this and some of the winter white mica will come out and some of the snowflake sparkle will come out but I want this to be a fairly even dusting but not a super thick one I want you to be able to see that green and I also want you to be able to see the texture. It's gonna hide the texture just a little bit. That's just the nature of a mica dusting. But I still think that this will complete our soap and make it look super wintry and sprucy. It's not Christmas exclusive, but hey, not everybody celebrates Christmas and not everybody likes those Christmassy scents. And honestly, this, this pine scent, I could see both men and women using this because it's got that pine woodsy scent, but it's also got some sweet candy vanilla notes in there. 
It's super nice. I would definitely describe it as a unisex scent. So, I thought that it would be nice to do a couple of soaps that weren't exclusively Christmas. Even though I definitely celebrate Christmas myself. And I am a sucker for Christmas decorations, let me tell you. Okay, so now our final step for now is going to be spraying the top with rubbing alcohol. I have mentioned several times that I just like to do this because I feel like it, yeah, see how it's doing that? It is dispersing that mica so that it's not just dots which is fine. There are some little speckles of mica that are going to stand out, but a lot of it will disperse and it'll look like a nice little blanket of snow on there. I might go back over top with just a little bit of the winter white and I think I'll do that now. Just a tiny bit to kind of bring back a little bit of speckles. But it also helps to lock in your mica or your glitter or whatever it is that you have dusted over the top, charcoal, things like that. And it helps it not to come off on your hand so much when you touch the soap. And it helps it to just kind of stick to the soap a little bit better, in my opinion. I demonstrated that with the cranberry fig soap, how I ran my fingers right across the top and it did not come off. And it also helps bring a little bit of vibrancy back into the soap. Now, hmm, I think I am gonna go in with a little bit more of the snowflakes sparkle. This might be too much, you guys. I know I'm, I can be kind of extra, but I feel like the rubbing alcohol kind of got rid of a lot of the shimmer. So I'm just going to very lightly go back over it. Just to bring a little bit of that sheen back. Didn't get enough there, I don't think. All right, there we go. I think that I'm going to call that done. Let me bring you guys in for a close-up. All right, you guys. Here is the close-up of the Santa's Spruce soap that we just made. It smells so good. I'm happy with the top. I did go a little bit heavier with the mica than I originally intended, but I'm super happy with that texture. I think it does, in my opinion, represent evergreen tree branch texture <laughs> or evergreen needle texture. And that snowflake sparkle is so pretty. It is giving it a very nice shimmery sort of pearlescent sheen. It's a little bit hard to see in this lighting, especially on camera. I will do a shot with the flash on as I always do with shimmer and or glitter. But that's all that I have for this portion of the video. I'll see you for the cut. here to cut the Santa spruce soap. Let me just show you guys what this looks like. There's not a whole lot going on on the outside here. You can see a little bit of mica that's going to be from the mica line inside. And the sides are all smooth so I have high hopes that there are no big air bubbles. But there is that pretty top. And I know that it's kind of hard to see in this lighting, but it does have a very nice light sheen to it. 
and that really pretty mica dusting on top of that texture is super nice and I'm rubbing my hand across the top and you can see aside from that little piece of soap nothing really comes off on my hand that is from spraying it with rubbing alcohol first to lock it to the soap so let's go on and cut into it now one thing that I do know about Michael lines this is my first one so I have high hopes that it looks good inside but you want to cut mica line soaps on their side rather than straight up and down and that's to avoid dragging mica all over your bars now if you're not able to do this for some reason you have a short soap cutter and you have embeds on the top or anything like that you can always either use a knife and free cut it but if you're really bad at that like me <laughs> You can take a paper towel or a rag and wipe the smeared mica off with rubbing alcohol. Just be very gentle. So, let's go on and cut into it. These are probably going to be very faint, but that's okay. So, there's the back. Nothing real special. I need to kind of squish that little corner down. But then there is the inside. Ooh, okay, so there's one Michael line, and then the second, and then the third. So very, very, very faint, a little bit fainter than I expected, but they are definitely there. <laughs> I really like this soap. It's simple, but you know what? Sometimes simple soaps just get it done for me, you know? So there's one side and then the other. Now there's a little bit of air here, but that's just something that's going to happen, unfortunately, sometimes. The soap is still a little bit soft in the middle, so it's cutting very well, but it is still hard enough to handle. All right, so there's one side. And that is from the soap not totally adhering or me not pushing it down quite enough to the next layer. But overall, not bad, and it's not all the way through. So you can see very faintly that Michael line there, that one there, and that one there. Oh man, cutting into this soap has released more of that fragrance and it is so good. So there's one side and then the other. I think next time I do a Michael line, since I had success with this one, I'm definitely going to have to do it again. It's there, there, and there. But next time I will do a little bit more mica with it being my first one. I wanted to give it a shot, but I was also being very cautious because it's not uncommon to have too thick of a mica or charcoal or whatever you're creating your line with, poppy seeds, anything like that. If you do it too thick, the layers will just break right apart because there's not enough soap to adhere the bar together. But next time I do think I will try and go for a little bit of a thicker dusting make it look a little bit more deliberate so there there and there and the other the top I'm really happy with the small amount of air bubbles I mean it would always be better if there were none but <laughs> overall I think this soap looks really nice simple but wintry the other and the top I just love that top it looks all snowy and pretty and oh and this smell you guys it smells so so good so 
there's one side. And the other, ooh, the Michelin shows up really well in that bar. There's one side, and the other. So there's one side, and then the other. I really like that one too. Alright, and this is the last bar. I need to cut just a little bit off of this one. So this will be a piece that I keep for myself or a sample bar or something like that. But this is the last bar. Michael Lime is coming through strong in this one. And there you go. So I'm going to untighten my string on my cutter here to store it. You never want to store these wooden ones, especially. You never want to store them with your wire taut because that can lead to breakage and it has happened before. It hasn't happened to me because I always make sure that I untighten it before I put it away, but I have seen many a person <laughs> who left it tight and it completely breaks this arm here. So these things are not very cheap. So <laughs> you wanna try to make sure you uh, untighten those things. So that is all that I have for you all for this video. If you enjoyed, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you like what I do on this channel, and turn those notifications on so that you never miss one of my uploads. And tell me what you think about this soap down below. Do you like it? Do you think it's too simple? Do you think the Michael line is not enough? Please let me know. I'd love to hear your comments down below. Just say hi. It makes my day when I hear from you guys. So that is all that I have for you for this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.